weekly euthanize the news there's yet another episode of youth weekly on youth tv africa and you are welcome here we bring you news that made headlines during the week in the language and perspective of young people i am success Ekwenyo. and i am helda apollos you're welcome here are some of the issues that hit the headlines during the course of the week al mustafa my freedom is victory for democracy 130 million Nigerians generate own electricity. Amechi goes to court over alleged impeachment plot. Hate voluntarily resigns to become a professor in the U.S. Child marriage. Orisa Jaffa to lead protest against senators. Ghana commits 31% of budget to education as against Nigerians 8%. Unemployment acute in Nigeria. Minister. NUC grants accreditation to University of Abuja suspended courses. Senate panel seeks transfer of Rivers Police Chief. And on the foreign scene, Royal Baby named George Alexander Louis. These were some of the news that made headlines during the course of the week. Join us for an expository session in our discussion segment. Weekly, euthanize the news. We are part of the solution. We bring you youth perspective on issues. Youths have a voice. We have a story to tell. Youth Weekly, euthanize the news. You're welcome back to the program. If you're just tuning in, this is still Youth Weekly on UTV Africa. And this is the segment where we scrutinize some of the front burner on some of the issues that actually made headlines in the news. Success. Very interesting issues on the news. I'm telling you, you very know, interesting. Uh, Mr. Fai is out of prison <laughs> after 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, 15 years. Isn't 15 long years of struggle to get him out. Years. But Lots he's of... out and he credits that victory to the democracy. democracy. So I think it's a plus for democracy. I yeah, think. a plus for democracy that um, law could actually fight through certain processes to give some people freedom that exactly. um, whether they deserve it or not, but you know, <laughs> at least, you know, they get a, a time to fight their case. Yeah. And there's a certain undertone of election. What I don't and, understand is yes. 2015 about him. I yeah. mean, you just came out from prison. Yes. What is... I mean, I'm hearing campaign in Kaduna for, for you. I mean, for presidency. Yes. That, 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 that I don't understand. It happened for Obasanjo. It happened for Mandela. So why Did you hear of the Alamesia one? Yes, I did. So yes, Alamesia coming again there for... There was something about him coming out for... What seconds. is going on? Well, As in, really, it's true that you can move from prison... To president. To the palace. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. It's actually yeah. interesting drama. We want to see how it unfolds. I mean, 2015, right? it's, it's, it's gradually becoming very, very interesting. I mean, yes. there's going to be plenty of drama. Plenty. <laughs> um, what other issues but interesting? young people, I mean, that, that is not... That you should not commit crime, please. Yeah, please, so. <laughs> All right, I mean, yes, Ghana is putting in 31% of their budget into education. 31. Now, we're comparing that to Nigeria. Nigeria is putting eight. <laughs> I see why Nigeria had to spend over 160 billion on education in Ghana. Well, the money is actually speaking for itself. You know, it has to go where there's quality, of where course. there's input. That's the point we are making. Right. And it's, it's, it's the statement to the value system of whether it's the individual or the organization. Where you put your money most is where you value. Right? That's why the whole world is patronizing the United Kingdom. You know, in the UK, their private schools are the, are the herd. Yes. They are the ones that people patronize. The UK is then, actually educating the world. Educating the world. So every, and they are, they are investing millions and billions of pounds into their education. I mean, why? See, 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 see University of Abuja, you know. In yeah, a, it's in also in the news. University of Abuja, recently just got accredited with some of their courses that were suspended before. Well, well that's actually a good news if you ask. Yeah, that's, that's you know, good. It's actually <laughs> good, good news Abuja. after having all this, mm. uh, you know, so much rambling, so much strikes. protest by students, you know. I, I think it's, it, you know, when you hear some of these kids, you know, react to this, you feel them, you feel their pain. How could you graduate from a department that is not accredited? You know, you spent four years, five years. In fact, medical students after fifth year, we're making so much loud cry the other time, but so we, you know, you see, we are really grateful for this. Into it, their energy, yes. their passion, and then all for nothing. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, 
I, I believe we should start beginning with the end in mind. Our, our government and institutions should begin to plan with the end in mind. Not to come halfway and then realize you cannot go all the way. Mm. And you know, people have actually paid the price very dearly and it's young people for for that matter so we, we sincerely know? appreciate the nuc for this this is very good Most thank you for definitely. for this you know unemployment is in the news again <laughs> unemployment you know I'm, I'm wondering is it that you know uh, our last feature yes. was on the uh festi Short cultural course. festival in uh, in the NYC camp yes, in NYC Abuja, camp. and we we're talking about the potential you could actually feel when you see this group of young people vibrant you know, and you wonder to yourself, is it that our government lacks the creativity to be able to channel these people in the right direction for productivity? You, you know, you ask yourself, what are the causes of some of these things? You know, unemployment based on statistics is at its all-time high in Nigeria, 23.9, mm -hmm. the highest it's ever been so far. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's very terrible. Isn't it amazing that Africa is filled with so much vibrant young people? And yet, there's no way to engage them meaningfully. I mean, see, I, I, I was checking the records, you know, Northern Africa is, is running into almost 40% unemployment rate. Wow. All right? I mean, in terms of young people now, yeah. um, South Africa is getting close to 30%. Sub-Sahara is, is terrible and here we are in Nigeria. You know, it's, it's crazy that these guys have so much and I, I think there are a few reasons for this, okay. all right? Um, young people are gradually depending so much on Government. white collar jobs. You know, they're looking forward to white collar jobs. Nobody yes. wants to do other things that could actually give them money and take care of themselves. You know, well, well, that's because the diversification in our there is no diversification in our economy, in our economy. You know? and some of these other sectors don't look very appealing to young people. You mm -hmm. know? When you think of going into agriculture, for instance, mm -hmm. you know it's not so lavished with all the good life that the white collar jobs promise young people. So it's something our government needs to take, but, needs to needs to do something. Of course, about. when you look at developed nations, mm -hmm. you were telling me the other day about how about sixty percent of their uh, employment comes from SMEs, you know, yeah. small medium enterprises, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and our government, I, I mean, uh, uh, this third world needs to actually take their cue from that. The private sector needs mm -hmm. to come into yeah. a lot of partnership with the government to be able to alleviate some of these concerns. Yeah, the government have been able to do some programs from, okay. like, from the subsidy, they were able to raise Shopee, okay. and then they were able to come up with um, you win to okay. enhance creativity and Well, innovation. these are laudable efforts. Yes, but we need a lot of this, not just from the government. We need to see private sector begin to consider their CSR in this direction All right. you know how they can begin to help young people become more innovative and be self-reliant in terms of job creation okay. because I mean young people can actually become innovative and create work for themselves definitely you know we can't just keep waiting for government to create jobs for it well I hope uh, we we'll all do play our part because mm -hmm. the government has a role to play and individuals also need to build their capacity because I feel uh, unemployability is another issue that mm -hmm. uh, we are grappling with organizations mm -hmm. uh, are actually looking out for young people with proactiveness but you find out that the graduates from our tertiary institutions of learning mm. lack uh, this, uh, the required skill set to mm. be able to be properly engaged mm. in different roles mm. in uh, various organizations that are employing. And, and so I feel that the young people also need to step up their game in that regard. There was something about power in that headline. Yeah. Amazingly, this is another issue that could be contributing to the previous one. Okay. Where companies can't, uh, their running cost is getting high because they're spending so much on power generation. Imagine a company putting in 30 to 40 percent of their profit into, I mean, into fueling and dieseling their, their power stations and stuff. It, it's not really encouraging. That's why some of these firms are moving away from Nigeria or moving away from some African countries to where perhaps reasonable. Um, stability of power is, is available, yeah. you know, and young people also feel that um, this is one of their excuses. You know, they, they can't be spending so much on power and doing business properly. Of course, you know, you can remember the interview that um, that Amampo had with, um, with our the president. president. A particular lady was actually saying she has three generators. Well, success. There's a lot to be said about um, the impact of the power sector on the economy and, and of course, on the young people Definitely. of our country. Definitely. You know, uh, but I feel that the young people also have a responsibility uh, and an accountability to themselves to improve on themselves because you can only control what you do. You cannot control mm -hmm. what other yeah. people do, but you can control your own actions. 
And so we call on the young people to actually take a proactive measure towards developing themselves and their capacity to be employable. And it's on that note that we will call on you to actually make your comments and observations, uh, your suggestions on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Africa. What do you think is the way forward uh, as far as unemployment in Nigeria is concerned? And how can our power sector be better developed to cater to the needs of 160 million people and counting uh, to now shift Nigeria from a third world to actually a first nation that we want it to be? Let us know what you think. Uh, in line with the unemployment in Nigeria and unemployability of young people, uh, UTV Africa crew were at an event organized by Core Development Initiative um, to train and equip young people, to empower them uh, to build their em uh, capacity in order to be employable and be able to achieve their highest potential and their dreams. Uh, next one, interesting watch, I, I'm sure you have a lot to learn. And this is some of the things we need to be doing even on a daily basis. So keep watching the program continues shortly. Youth Weekly, Euthanizing News. We are part of the social. We bring you youth perspective on issues. Youths have a voice. We have a story to tell. Youth Weekly. Euthanize and news. So the only person responsible for your life is yourself. Some people will say it's God. Okay. Because we have the God factor in Nigeria. Let me let me let me clarify something. Yes, God is responsible for your life. But you know what? He gave you a will, he gave you a mind, and he gave you so many things. And that's why honestly at the end of the day, he's probably responsible, but you must take the full responsibility. So the person sitting in your seat is responsible for your life. Personal responsibility is about ownership. When you decide, I want to take 100% responsibility, do you know what that does for you? You take ownership for yourself. You just, you can't come to the point when you know, I am responsible for my life. Do you understand? If I need to get a degree, what do I need to do to get a degree? If I need to get a job in the oil industry, what do I need to do to start the course? If I'm in finance or if I'm in IT, what do I need to do to move forward? So it's taking ownership. What are the things I need to do for myself to make that change? Um, the guy in the This guy, yeah. This guy is yeah. okay. Keep up parties. Keep up. Keep up parties. So if he walks in for a hip hop vacancy, he will pass. Your perception and normally. Doesn't unnecessarily. Yeah. Okay, but he is fit. Based on appearance, he's fit for that kind of role. Yeah. But if he works in for a financial analyst job, you may ask yourself, am I, are you kidding me? When it has to do with quality, that there is a lot that has to do with your present, presentation or presentability when you seek opportunities. There is a lot that has to do with it. Pleasure in the session was saying that um, there's this scripture that says that God looks at the heart, right? Say, but man looks at the physical. Okay, so since it is not God that is employing you, you better dress properly. Okay, uh, we're going to find out how employability skills, qualities, and values translate into the wrong things. And I think that's what she's trying to say. So, these skills are qualities that we're trying to learn today. How do you translate them to the wrong things? So, employers are looking for people to employ. Some people don't have jobs today and don't have the opportunity of running their own business or doing things because they probably don't even know what is required, is what we're saying. Right? So today we're going to find out how you can, if I have a skill, how am I going to transfer it to the workplace? Okay. So employability is what gets you the job. Employability is what gets you the job. So I asked that question about people who are really working to let you know that there are two sides of it. I've, like I said, I've been working for one fifteen years, but guess what? The other thing that will keep you is sustainability. That's what keeps you going on the job. That's sustainability. So you are employed now, but there's also the other side of it, which is sustainability. You want to look at changing your job. You want other opportunities that will come up. So there's employability and sustainability. Now today you've learned a lot of communication, problem solving, as I said, you have to 
all the extra mile, you research. If you want to apply for a job, you have to know. You can't just turn up and you know be like that. You have to be a hundred percent. When you're a hundred percent, then definitely you're gonna get to where you expect to be. There is no doubt about that, whether in Nigeria or anywhere in the world. So you have to understand that all my years I've been trained as a lawyer, all my skills are legal skills. I don't know anything about business skills, I don't know anything about the banking sector and all that. I had no training. So I was moving from one totally different industry to another, right? So I moved to this industry and I had to like, basically the first week I was working, my manager told me to do something on Microsoft Project. I don't know what Microsoft Project is, I've never heard of Microsoft Project. And she just told me that and then, you better, I'm like, excuse me, I'm a lawyer. She's like, huh, you're the business development manager, you better just get on with it. And I was so, I had to quickly there and then start emailing my friends in London. They had to quickly, I had to go on Google, I had to quickly, within minutes, quickly get my head around Microsoft Project. And I got, and it wasn't difficult. You know, the first thing you have to think about is that you can do it. Anything you set your mind to do, you can always do it. That's the main thing I wanted to get out today. Read, research, hard work, make yourself stand out. You will stand out enough. Like one of the facilitators said this evening, when you stand out enough, they will keep looking for you, looking for you to get your skills because those skills are important to them. Okay, let's just imagine you're in the government. They was one thing to do to take care of this employment issue. I'll encourage hard work. I'll encourage giving it your 100% as we're taught tonight. This 100% responsibility, this 100% employability comes from your responsibility. That if you give it, if you give anything you're doing your all, you do well at it. And if you do well at something, people will come back to look for you to do that thing again for them. Personal development, I'm focusing on that. And developing, my, um, I'm identifying my values, governing values, and also working on my skills and uh, my qualities. Wow, an empowering session in our success, wouldn't you say? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, core initiative, you're doing a nice work. I, I believe we should see more and more of this kind of um, mm -hmm. conferences and workshops for young people and more and more of young people actually going and attending this program. Yeah, you know why this is very important? I mean, we missed, uh, the bulk of our young people missed this by the way in school. Yes. It should have been something enshrined into their primary school, secondary school and all that. Exactly. But they didn't have all this, so they just went to school without considering all this facet of trainings that you and know. then by the time they are coming out and there is a need and mm. demand on their potential, yeah. they are not equipped to know how to deploy them, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, in a very yeah. productive way. Yeah. Yeah. That is why as young people, you need to take responsibility for yourself. Yes. Build yourself, train yourself. There is nothing you can't do to yourself to bring out the best that you can be. Yeah. You know, but quite a way, and this is where we're going to wrap up our discussion for today. I'm quite aware that a lot of you are watching this program from different parts of the world, the United States, um, South Africa, um, Uganda, Nigeria, you know, the UK, Every, everywhere people are watching and they've been making statements about it. Thank you very much for watching. But we would like you to like the page each time you would like the page and then drop your comments. Follow us on Twitter. Make, you know, just be a part of it. We're growing and we're going to give young people voice. We want to give them platform to hear their view and express themselves on issues that concerns them. Once again, I want to say thank you for joining us on Youth TV Africa today.